flow they here. Well, and, and that's kind of the, the next question is uh, you, you suggested that there are other entities that would like to, uh, doctors entities and, and, and uh, physicians groups that want to participate in Covered California. Can they come into California, Covered California at any time? Right. But they don't get any patients until next year if they're okay. Okay. But of course, the problem that we were talking about is being up on the website is doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy to find, and that's right. I, I think that that is going to be an issue over the next 12 months that really has to be addressed by Covered California and by, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see legislation in this area that if provider networks are now becoming uh, a, a foremost issue under health care reform, then you've got to be able to get the information without being a genius and, and having, uh, you know, um, access to supercomputers. It's got to be readily available. I wanted to mention something about the uh, enrollment counselors. As far as we know, our jobs are over this December. So then it'll fall on the insurance people to do it. At first, they weren't allowing insurance people to do Cover California. It was just the entities. Now they've trained the insurance people. We can't work along with the insurance people. They say it's a insurance agent. I'm saying a conflict of interest. So we can't work with them. And our jobs are over, as far as we know, December of 2014, because there's, no, there's not going to be any more federal dollars through Covered California to pay the entities to enroll people. Um, I'm kind of... I'm a little confused about when you have fluctuating income, like, okay, so now I'm unemployed, but I'm a freelance writer. Say I get some really good gig, and that, that would put me over, I would say, well, this month shows that if I had a projected earnings of this amount for the year, I would be eligible for this level. So I sign up, I could sign up for it and show one month. Is that right? And then what if I didn't follow through with the promise of those earnings? How would, would they find out and make me pay it back? How, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, the, the, subsidies, the subsidies are technically known as advanceable tax credits. And uh, it's supposed to be based on prior income or pr your most recent tax return. But there's also the provision that for people who have fluctuating incomes, and not, you know, sort of this constant annual income to specify or to estimate what your income is going to be for the upcoming year. And you can get, you can receive a subsidy based on your estimate. Now, the reconciliation will take place at the following year when you file your income tax and say, okay, I estimated that this is what I was going to earn, but I actually earned this, and you might be required to pay back some of the subsidy that you received if your earnings far exceed your original estimate. Okay. To cover California. So if any sort of income changes or anything like that on a month-to-month -month basis, you pick up the phone and you call Covered California and let them know and they will adjust accordingly. So it's just you a, can do it during a quick the year. call away. What if it went the other way and of you earn 10,000 less, do they give you more? Same thing. Yeah, you've got to let them know. Opposite. Exactly. Yeah, and it's actually, it's, it's an average of the whole entire year. So it's based on your yearly income, your estimate. And for the first year, it's a good faith estimate. And then after that, then you're just going to reconcile at the end of the year, just how you always do with your taxes. Estimate, yeah, estimated. And if your income changes, you just pick up the phone and call Covered California. Yeah, yeah there'll Correct. be a new line item or perhaps uh, a separate form. Uh, right now there's a form uh, 8885 
for tax credits that are not related to the ACA. But I looked at that form the other day in response to a question about this, and it looks like they might continue that for ACA. How many months were, did you receive a subsidy, uh, and what were you entitled to based on your final earnings for the entire year? Depending on right, if it's fluctuating wildly, then uh, then you need to, to call them and adjust as you go through the year. So don't wait until the end of the year and then pay back thousands of dollars. Tell right. them that you need to reduce your subsidy because your income has suddenly gone up yeah. unexpectedly. Um, a couple of, yeah, I'm sorry. A couple of people mentioned that they um, about providers. When I signed up, this was in mid December. There was a tool that allowed me to go in and say, okay, I, I, this is my doctor. I found my doctor. Uh, then I clicked, I want to preview plans. And then it had a little, little check mark on all the plans that had my doctor. And that has gone away now because I think they're working on it. But I'm sure it will come again. It's not something that they've forgotten or they've, but it, it was there and it was actually a pretty cool tool. So, well, I mean, do you want? Can you stay for two more minutes? Or two do more you minutes. Want to go? Okay. These are these are quick statements. These are answers to a question that came up earlier. Um, Canada has a, a really wonderful national medical health care plan, and I always like stumping Americans by asking them, what do you think the name of it is? And you guys are all grinning. Um, it's Medicare. Medicare. And, and it, it started at the, we would call it the state level. It call, started out in one province. But the joke, that, the other part that I like to beat him up with is it took 87 days from the time the bill hit the floor in their parliament to the time it was enacted. 87 days. Wow. And, and most of that was just uh, hammering out a couple of things with uh, uh, the internals for who would be the administrators. No, it wasn't a question of whether or not they, you know, who was going to be covered or anything like that. I always enjoy that. So um, as, counter, uh, contrast that to what we ended up with. Well, I want to thank you so much. I thank mean, I, I learned a lot. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, so was Gerald Kaminsky, UCL, Jerry Kaminsky, UCLA, Marcia Davalos, and Connie Kizzy Gillette. Thank you. Um, they, can all be, they can all be found, I think, <laughs> in need of them. Uh, and, yeah, and remember, uh, it's, it's February 6th is our election meeting, our next meeting. So, and it will be here, and you know, thanks for coming. <laughs>